I was asked by a new Assistant Secretary of the VA to do this, uh, Dr. Linda Schwartz. She said that we have been fighting for decades to get doctors and healthcare professionals conduct research. Anywhere we could get them to do it, we asked them to do it. And Carl told us a little of the efforts about the research that's being done. The difference is now we need to use that research. We've got to put it to work. We can't just hide it, waiting for the next chapter or the next honor to be given. We have to get it out and make sure all of the healthcare professionals understand what you have developed and what you've discovered and what you've learned. And I'll give you just two examples. This is a book put out by the Vietnam Veterans of America. It's dedicated to Agent Orange. And inside it are two and a half pages of presumptive maladies, diseases, that can be traced back to the exposure to Agent Orange. What is their problem with this book? They can't get anyone to take it. The hospitals don't want it. Clinics don't want it. They say, what is this? And they say, it explains a very simple connection between military service and some horrific maladies that can, in some cases, be passed down not to the succeeding generation, but skip a generation and go from grandparent to grandchild. And if you knew that, just think how more informed your treatment would be. This is with the American Academy of Nursing, who are asking the same thing that the Vietnam veterans are. Have a simple question for every internist who's meeting their patient. And that question is, have you ever served? And if someone says no, well, has anyone in your family served? Not just. Do you uh, chew your fingernails? Have you ever wet the bed? And these are all the questions they ask. Have you smoked marijuana? Have you done cocaine? They ask you everything. How about a simple question? Have you ever served? And if they say yes, just this little book alone gives you two pages of maladies about which one can question people. So it's not just conducting the research. The challenge now is all the wonderful things that you've accomplished. How do we get other professionals to take advantage of that in treating their patients? Because if the VA can do this, and the VA can challenge their doctors to use the information they've found to better the lives of veterans and their families and their loved ones, surely the civilian sector can do it as well. Five years ago this month, Corey was an Army Ranger in Afghanistan on patrol with nine other Rangers when a 300-pound IED exploded along their route. One Ranger was killed. The other eight were all wounded. Corey was blown into a nearby canal. The right side of his head crushed and caved in. He underwent six surgeries at military hospitals in Afghanistan, at Lunchstool, Germany, and in Bethesda before arriving at the VA Polytrauma Center in Tampa, Florida. Comatose and in a state doctors described as vegetative. VA's remarkable staff weren't about to give up. They went to work trying to jumpstart his brain. Supported by the latest medical know-how, they tried a wide variety of sensory approaches to awaken his consciousness. Everything from aromatherapy to sitcoms on the TV. Three months later, three months later, Corey became one of the seven out of 10 patients with severe traumatic brain injuries who come back to life through VA's Emerging Consciousness Program. Thanks to the miracle workers at the Poly Trauma Center, Thanks to the loving support of his family, and thanks to his own fighting spirit, Corey's made incredible progress. How much? Uh, his proud dad, Craig, emailed me a few months ago uh, to tell me that Corey had just walked a full mile 
without crutches or a walker. Now, I told that story, the entire story, at the ribbon cutting for the new polytrauma center at Tampa. When I gave the little update on Corey at the end, there was a cheer from the crowd. And it came from a, a group of folks that were sitting all together over on the side. It was his nurses and doctors. I thought I could do that. It was his nurses and doctors that had taken care of Corey while he was there, and had basically become part of his family. VA is the second largest federal department. We have over 340,000 employees serving our 22 million veterans around the country. We provide $66 billion in annual compensation for disability, dependency, and indemnity. We provide $10 billion in educational benefits each year. We guarantee 2 million home loans with the lowest foreclosure rate and the highest satisfaction rate in mortgage lending. We're the nation's ninth largest life insurance enterprise with $1.3 trillion in in-force coverage and 6.7 million clients served. We operate the nation's largest cemetery system with 131 cemeteries that earn the highest customer satisfaction ratings of all major public and private enterprises in the U.S. And, and no, we don't survey the people that are buried there. <laughs> and last but not least, we are the largest integrated healthcare system in the country. 8.9 million veterans enrolled, 150 medical centers affiliated with over 1,800 educational institutions, 819 community-based outpatient clinics, nearly 90 million outpatient visits each year, nine zero, not 19, nine zero million outpatient visits each year, 300 vet centers providing readjustment counseling, and I gotta tell you, every vet, I was in the vet center in Montgomery, Alabama on Friday. Um, I was once again moved to tears as the veterans stood up and told me what that vet center had meant to them and how many of them told me that they thought it had saved their lives. It's, it is a well, our vet centers are a well-kept secret around the country. They are amazing. Every one I go into, every veteran I speak with will tell you how powerful that forum is for them to associate with their fellow veterans. 135 nursing homes, we call them community living centers, 104 residential rehabilitation treatment centers, 70 outreach and mobile clinics that are serving more re remote and rural areas. Uh, that's the scope and the scale of today's VA. The first person that raised his hand in Phoenix was a surgeon, neurosurgeon. He was getting ready to go up to the operating room. And he explained to me, pleaded with me, he said, I'm getting ready to go up and do surgery. We have three x-ray machines in our operating room. Two of them don't work. Please, can you get someone to fix our x-ray machines? Well, as you might expect, like the next day, we had people in Phoenix to fix the x-ray machines. You know what the problem was? Those x-ray machines were operated by PCs, by computers, personal computers. Those two computers were still running on Windows XP. They had not been updated to Windows 7. That's why they didn't work. So you stop and you think about what it, how little it would have taken for someone to step up and take ownership, own the issue, own the problem, get it fixed. This isn't just about secretaries and deputy secretaries and undersecretaries. It's about people up and down the organization grabbing a hold of an issue, taking ownership, and delivering better health care outcomes for our veterans. This is a leadership challenge, and it's a cultural challenge, and we're working on it. For her first 13 years researching spinal cord injuries, Dr. Spongen wasn't funded by VA. She was funded by the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. 
She didn't start receiving VA funding until 2003, two years after she and Dr. Bowman had established the VA National Center of Excellence for Medical Consequences of Spinal Cord Injury, where they recently tested, it's amazing, I've actually seen this in operation, they recently tested a new bionic system that enables a person with paralysis to stand, walk, and even climb stairs. I'm told that the most profound impact is the ability of a paralyzed person to stand up and look another person in the eye. She and Dr. Bauman still maintain teaching positions at Mount Sinai, though most of their work is for VA. That success, that little piece of history, points to the importance of VA's partnerships with over 1,800 academic institutions nationwide. Those partnerships are important not just to veterans, but to the whole nation. And they're important for two reasons. One is training. Each year, VA helps train 120,000 health professionals, 62,000 medical students and residents, 23,000 nurses, 33,000 trainees in other health fields. More than 70% of all U.S. doctors have received training at VA. No single institution trains more clinicians than VA. The other reason is research. The Bronx VA's work on spinal cord injury is just one of many examples of partnerships for advancing medical science, not just for veterans, but for all Americans. It is uh, humbling to come out into a community, a great community like San Francisco, and see the work that all of you are doing together to help our veterans. Humbling and uh, uh, and very important. You know, at the, uh, I was telling somebody the other day, the, the, the greatest ambition I think any of us can aspire to is to make a difference, um, to leave things a little better than we found them. And clearly, you all are doing that here in San Francisco and by extension for veterans all across the country. Thank you all very much.